Okay, yeah. so Adil, like I said, you know, so there are a lot of questions that have come in and that have been crowdsourced. Okay, so um, is, <clears throat> just so that I place things in context, if you if uh, you don't cover part of it, I'll I'll come to you uh, separately. So Thank Adil, you. the first uh, part of the question is, you know, from people who own cars, you know. And uh, this is about because, you know, like I told you when we were speaking earlier uh, this week uh, about people who own cars and maintenance of car uh, when the car is stationary. So yes. one of the questions that has come in is that, you know, since March last year, I barely used my car and uh, we did uh, just two short weekend uh, breaks. Uh, to Alibag and Pune. Incidentally, just so that you may know, this gentleman who uh, sent this question in, he's based out of Mumbai. And uh, so, like I said, you know, he he's, uh, he's sent in his question to you is that uh, he's done two uh, short weekend uh, breaks to uh, Alibag and Pune from Mumbai. So you know the distance involved out here. And uh, his qu question is that except for occasional short commutes to visit the in-laws or a short uh, shopping spree, a new car has uh, remained stationary in an open parking lot uh, at our housing complex. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, what are the risks of not using the car for an extended period that I should be aware of? And okay. how do I take uh, better car, uh, better care of my car in such kind of a situation? And what kind of a weekly routine uh, would you recommend that I should follow? Yeah. First things first is forget about the exterior of the car, but please get your car cleaned the internals at least once a week. That's very, very vital. Okay. So because if you have to even start your car for warming up once a week, you have to get inside the car, inside the interior. So you don't want any stale air, fungus, etc. So see to it that your interior is cleaned properly at least once a week. Okay, now what is, I see this as symptomatic of many people who live in societies and cars are parked there and all that. Most important thing, when you park your car, don't, given our uh, nature right now, we always uh, use the handbrake and the handbrake is put on disengage the handbrake and see that the car is put in gear. There's a reason for this. The handbrake operates across most cars in the uh, the rear wheels. There's a tendency for it to what you call rust across over there. And this is across all makes of car. So please don't worry about seeing specks of brown rust across on the brake drums or the brake disc. Ensure that the uh, handbrake is always disengaged and you put the car into gear uh, and uh, park your car, close your car. This is very, very vital. Number two, at least once a week, warm up your car, fire up the car engine, keep it uh, idling for about 8-10 minutes. Your battery will stay charged and whatnot. At least once a week, Please do make a round of your society with your car so everything is what you call uh, well oiled, well drilled, so there is nothing which gets stuck or whatnot. These are cardinal simple things to do. Very, very vital. If you have got, say, nowadays I see a lot of people putting in, uh, what do we say, those electronic ionizers and whatnot, you push it into your cigarette lighter thing and whatnot. When you get out, please disengage because they have a tendency to drain your battery dry. So simple, small, logical things have to be done. These are fundamental things. And this is what many people don't do out of laziness or lethargy or whatever. So... That's uh, super, uh, Adil, because, you know, you just preempted a question, actually, on the handbrake uh, one. You know, that was actually 
that that is something that are, that is a question that are actually come in on whether the handbrake got to be engaged or disengaged so you actually preempted a question that is uh, that is actually there so so <laughs> having asked that there's another question that is uh, there you know now that the monsoon has set in in the country uh, yeah. and it tends to increase uh, the humidity now what does increased moisture mean uh around us now you already you started off speaking about the interior of the car for bombay moisture is there all 365 days a year and that right. moisture what you call sucks in a lot of the atmospheric salts so bombay cars have a love affair with rust or from the elevated you address this for across the country as well you know this, this is not just yeah, bombay, yeah. For, so for bombay that is but with that's why i said as far as moisture is concerned your interior it doesn't much affect uh, anywhere else in the hinterland because the uh, uh, sun is uh, a fierce what you call uh, unit which uh, takes care of a lot of the moisture being there but the interior is where you have to be ultra careful because that's where you breathe in when you are driving and whenever you start a car whether now or in any other weather conditions summer winter etc every day in the morning when you start your car please roll down the windows even though you may want to what you call have the ac on or on. roll down the windows run the car for about 5 6 7 minutes with the uh, windows open so the, what happens is fresh air gets off all the accumulated toxins which are then taken away whether after that also i think your uh, baffles for the air conditioner outlets they need to be ch- uh, at least checked or cleaned maybe once or twice a year it's a simple core but not many people do it including the manufacturers they we give it for a service they don't even what you call look at that thing i think it's very very vital to do this especially in these days now where so many viruses are coming from china from the northern neighbors you're coming from outer space etc i wouldn't be surprised that we'll have the virus coming out of the outlet of a car which is so close to us so uh, adil while on the point of you know you just made the point of cleaning the air conditioning ducts uh, so to speak yeah. and that you know even while routine servicing that is often ignored yeah. Uh, yes. but this is something that can be easily done i i hear you but this is something that you know uh, people like me uh, wouldn't know and i know you have uh, laughed at me very often in the past uh, for not taking I good care I and i know you will laugh at me for asking you this question but uh, please need to laugh at me <laughs> so no, no, go no, ahead no, laugh at me but how i have to ask you this i love you this <laughs> i always love with you because that's the far more <laughs> joyous thing to do <laughs> but adil you will have to explain this uh, you know how do we go about doing this uh, i this may sound very very simple to you but for people like me it certainly does not yeah. sound uh, yeah. uh, uh, a straight forward thing to do charles it is uh, we are creatures of habit and uh, many a time what is after new range of cars which has come after the era of the ambassador and the padmini and what not got over you got the maruti is coming in and after the maruti we got so many other cars which came in they made life much more easier for us how many times have you ever opened the bonnet of your car to check the radiator uh, coolant other than the ambassador and uh, premier days you needed to do that at least once a week if not twice a week here you don't do it for twice a year or not no, once in two years you don't do it there's no need to do that so this has instilled in us a sense of false security regarding the other things in the cabin of the car so the mechanicals are all taken care of but we have thought the same thing happens within the interior also you have to keep it dust is a big big uh deterrent towards efficiency in the indian environment and from the uh, air conditioner compressor the blowers and then the ducts and those baffles there we have not kept pace today the high end cars come with pollen filters 
that's the next big step which will happen pollen filters will start filtering down from the s classes of this world down to the marutis of this world that process has already started and i think it will be accelerated with uh, what we have seen about you know, with the virus and so many other things so these things will have but we have to be aware ourselves even the every simple touch points on a car steering wheel gear shifter switches you need to get them clean properly every time it is now become so much of a even your uh, glasses from within not glasses from the exterior because you live within the car when you drive it you don't so you need to have everything clean properly there is you will have to have like you have a regime now that you are going to mask up you will have to do have another regime to what is called see to it that all your touch and feel points within the car where you sit etc operate will need to be given the same thought process and addressed in that manner you know so if i hear you right the point you are making is that the way we interact with the inner cabin of our car in the post pandemic world you will have to look at it very very differently and the onus is upon us and it is not you cannot leave it to the service center that is the point that you are making service center you'll go once in 6 months maybe okay you go once in 6 months excepting you because you had a real fetish for the palio and you found a real oh, come became... on it's, a, it's my it's my linear <laughs> tj come on a tj tj <laughs> so you went there at least once a fortnight so i understand oh, why you went. <laughs> but many others are little bit more sensible <laughs> so, come on adil i know you i know you don't like me for my that car, but i love that car you let me give you a break i, I know I, i know see love makes you do crazy things so i don't <laughs> <laughs> so i don't want to call, uh, take that into uh, play across over there yes i know everyone see they say that men become foolish in love fine year at least that is one single commodity the virus cannot take away from us <laughs> we continue to remain <laughs> idiotic in this paradise what that's why we are human <laughs> okay. okay but yes but yes you have to take care of the uh, interior environments of your car even more strongly more frequently than we would do ever in the past that is a given chance it is a really a so is there is there something uh, in terms of what specifically are you doing other uh, you know in terms of uh, uh, say for instance we know that there are disinfectants you know that we use at home uh, yeah. for instance you know to take care are there any specific brands or products that you recommend i'll tell you one more very important thing i certainly forgot about that which bears even more relevance now the other day when i want to get my second shot of the vaccine at that time i got talking to a doctor friend of mine he says adil do you know how much of a uh, important thing you we wear gloves you may mask across or there you go home wash your hands etc everything he says but have you ever realized your shoes and your trouser points they are exposed to even more of that stuff than that so you get into a car or your home your first thing you do is try to what you call don't wear your trousers the same for the another day and socks and shoes ensure that they are cleaned well same way when you get into a car every now and then ensure that your floors and mats are cleaned even much more frequently than they would be in the past so get that also very very importantly done and i still feel you don't need to use any great sprays or anything and what not maybe once a month you have your desanitizing spray or whatever is there but it has to be cleaned well at least once a week and i've got so many cars across over there for me even though i have to what you call uh, warm up my four five cars it takes me a better part of two hours because one by one by one i have to do that try to do that once a week so you have to what you call whether you like it or not and i've stopped telling the guy to the cleaner who comes every day in the morning 
I said, without me being there, he will not clean the car. So at least once a, it makes you have something much more meaningful to do instead of going to your paleo dealership once a fortnight. You do once yes, a week. Yes, I, I, I have one car and you call me a nut. And you have four or four, five cars and... <laughs> Why are I still don't go to... You say you, you have four, five cars and... and you come on. Let, let everyone else decide who's a nut <laughs> job, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, 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 jokes aside, you need to, what you call, have basic super cleaning of the... Many people clean the dashboards. They don't clean the door pads. Door pads as much important to be cleaned as possible. I told you, insides of the glasses, inside of the windscreen, both front and back, insides of the glass windows, very, very vital. So these are simple, small things you have to address. You know, Don't neglect okay. them. Don't neglect okay. them. Okay. 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 Fair enough. Fair enough. Now, um... Uh, here's another uh, question that has come in. Uh, this is on the uh, you 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 spoke about the electronics of the uh, car. Uh, while on that, there's one question that has come in that uh, most high-end cars have warning systems that go off when you start the car after a long while. Uh, do we need to be prepared for increased incidents of electronics in cars going haywire? Yeah, again, like I told you, uh, in uh, two things which uh, work uh, to the detriment of the modern car is inactivity. So all these modern day cars, the top end cars, anything about 20 lakhs of rupees has got innumerable sensors for everything, you know. Those sensors do what you call get uh, dimmed into... Uh, what you call inactivity because they have not been used. So when you uh, fire up a car and if you don't fire up a car regularly, at least once a week and for about 10, 15 minutes across over and keep the engine warmed and the whole system's running and also have a small spin. Maybe that is where, but I feel that inactivity for any car, new, old, etc., is a killer you have to keep the car running a little bit at least. And a little bit means you do have a half a kilometer run and come back, that's good enough. But not doing that for months at, at an end is not good. Okay. okay. It's the same. Eight days you are gorging on a meal and you don't even, what you call, step out of your house to stretch yourself. Forget doing any exercises. You're going to get it in the neck. So you need to, what do you call, give, you need to give the cars a lung opener every now and then. That's very much. Yeah, I, I know, I know, I know, I know. I know how you think about automobiles. I know how you think about automobiles. I know that. I know you're a long distance. I know you. I know, and, and, I, I know exactly how you think about automobiles. I know, that I know whom you're in love with. I know whom you're in love with. I know whom you're in love with, really. I know whom you love more than I. I think your wife holds that against you. But anyway, be that as it may, there's another question. Actually speaking, you did such a raw nerve. You, you said the right thing. because <laughs> I am what I am because of how she treats me. And there's food aplenty. <laughs> so, Adil, I didn't follow up on one question with you earlier on. Uh, you were speaking about rusting and uh, the weather in cities like Mumbai, for instance, which is, you know, close to the coast. So, one question that is there is about uh, rust gathering on the surface. And our car, uh, rust, surface rust. Ah, surface rust, okay. Yeah, no. So the question here is, uh, is covering the car up a good idea? Is that a sensible thing? Would you, what do you yeah. have to say about that? Again, two schools of thought because modern day cars are anyway very well surface coated with a you know, paint treatment in very different ways compared to the Ambassador Premier era. First, the quality of the steel, the sheet steel, etc., is way superior. 
don't please go because it is uh, you feel that the material is thin it's not thin it's thick by design and not by anything else and uh, it is not that ke this is going to be a weak car or anything today metallurgy has really gone across uh, progress tremendously so it's only ultra corrosive weather like you have i've seen cars even in chennai which are not as corrosive as they I, they would be if they were in mumbai so there is a differentiation also so the our types of uh, covers which are available a blend of cotton and polyester rather than tarpaulin which they earlier used to use oil based thick uh, thing they you never used to work well and this uh, contributed more to rusting than to saving the car so i think you need to what you call invest in a good set of uh, car covers which uh, take this uh, issue out from the equation you know okay mm. okay uh another no. question now i don't one more thing since we are talking if you have got a car in a uh, uh, say a big condo uh, building sort of thing with has got its own basement or terrace parking like that which is covered you have a roof on top and all that or whatever if you have got closed parking the closed roof it's always important like some of my friends in bombay the well heeled friends in bombay they thought that and they have got uh, great uh, classic cars from the 30s 40s and to get a car like th- that to be repainted or refurbished every 4 5 years because of rust is not on so what they have done in their garages they have got temperature controlled garages so there's a ac fitted and proper ducting done so that ventilation is good the ac keeps the cars parked for days at an end at a sustained temperature it prevents any moisture formation which will lead to rust it is cheaper in the longer run to have a control uh, temperature control environment when the cars are garage then to what you call keep on refurbishing them every 4 5 years so that is different strokes for different folks but this is one of the things which very many have done in bombay and i've seen that thing you know some seriously fancy people i tell you sorry Do you know some seriously fancy people i mean did i get some place at one of their garages let me let me tell you i let me change that adjective fancy people and let me say that they are far more fine fine people uh, <laughs> and they are crazy enough for doing it for their passion you know <laughs> yeah, i know I, i i take my words back but i but i totally hear where you're coming from yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah what what other okay. questions do you have okay okay so other no this is this is an interesting one and i don't know if this is um, if this is an urban myth or not but this is something i tend to do as well you know when the car is parked you know that it's going to stay parked for a while you know you tend to over inflate the tires a wee bit uh, than what is recommended than what the tire manufacturer recommends now uh, is that uh, sensible is that recommended uh, what do you, you wh- where do you come from you, no no you have to always keep the recommended tire pressures as per the manufacturer's handbook for the car that is a given there is no question about anything like that i would always say that always inflate it at the determined inflation levels specified in the handbook of the car nothing more nothing less well, why is that uh, and where does this over inflation that you know that you keep it over inflated where, where does it come from and i, I myself would like to know where is it come from oh, <laughs> okay. uh, where is it? i, I okay. don't know uh, it, okay it, maybe uh, it could have happened in the old days a uh, lot of ignorance was there about tires the tires of again like i we spoke about metallurgy tar technology also in the old days was different there were nylon cross ply tires now we have got very different steel belted uh, radials etc the construction different materials are different so this quite but tar technology has progressed also tremendously but 
more than that and I, one more thing since i told you also about getting the car for a small 500 meter spin once in 6 7 days the car staying idle there can give your tire a little bit of a hard spot resting on the same patch you need to have the tires rotated in the car uh, working across well so this is also a simple thing like you are stuck in the house for 10 15 20 days and then you say okay charles off you go and get me that loaf of bread and you say oh i can't go that quickly that's where the car also what you call as the, the tires also squeal on that in that way you know they protest but then they go ahead and do it you know what adil uh, you know uh, listening to you actually is making me feel very very guilty now you know guilty uh, you should be yeah, yeah because yeah. you you're making you're making my you make you know what i really like is that you know you bring so much passion uh, make it make it sound so human like you make so uh, I'm, I'm, I, I am so guilty of all the things that you said that I, I feel like going down right away and apologizing to my God. Do and, that. You know, listen. And, 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 and while you are doing that, please take that ice cream out from the freezer and get it to all yourself. <laughs> 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 so then you are scared of the guilt, you know. <laughs> uh, and <laughs> and here's one that has come from a uh, from a new car owner is uh, that um, you know uh, he's got he's had the car for a while and um, has not been able to get the first three car service done on time but the manufacturer has been fairly flexible mm. uh, but uh, he remains concerned about going to you know to the place. And the question to you is uh, uh, that, you know, uh, uh, about sending the car, you know, but you know, it's kind of a little iffy about going to wherever the place is. Uh, going long distance no, will be key. Uh, not so much a question of going long distance, but, you know, going to the place. But, you know, there are a lot of mobile car servicing options that are available, you know, that come to your place. Yes. Uh, do yes. you have a view on this, you know, to the manufacturer yeah, yeah, option yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. as opposed to mobile car servicing options coming no, no, uh, given the environment that we are in? Uh, if your car is under warranty, uh, uh, stay with the manufacturer's own servicing things. Whatever, one year, two years, if you've got a warranty package, a service package of three, four years, I think the manufacturers themselves also now extended that thing because of the uh, lack of use of the cars there in park. They are all the seized of the situation. Important thing across over there as far as service is concerned, I think most cars now have a first service interval of 5,000 kilometers and then it is every 10,000, I think. That's the general yardstick right now. Excepting if you go down to the very small cars, then it's still every 5,000 kilometers. I think... What is important is not about lack of use, but the amount of time the car has stopped to park. The oil needs to recirculate it well. And within the engine, why we told, tell you about warming up the engine every at least once a week is for the oil passages, etc., not to accumulate sludge or whatever. You have to keep those things. So I feel that... Once the thing, your six month or your 10,000 kilometer thing is done, ensure that 10,000 kilometer or that one year period, whatever is mentioned in the handbook, change the oil. Even if you may not have done, instead of 10,000, you may have done only 500 kilometers. Change the oil. Very vital. So these small, small things are best addressed by going to the service dealership of a manufacturer itself. Post that thing if you want to do, and you so if you even if you want to take a, those new mobile service guys, and there are lots of good genuine people who are offering that service. 
you like i told you that you have to be there to take care of the cleaning of the interior of the car you need to maintain your logbook of your car yourself that on so and so date i had done this service on this service i had done these these things so if you have to use an external service to come so at least you know what you had done before those guys also are aware about what a or b or c model car requires around that thing so information is key otherwise they will do some service which is not in consonance to what has been specified in the handbook this is very very vital so you may do it as a quick fix because you don't have the time to go to a uh, service in a dealership of your uh, car from service um, uh, sales point which you have bought so these guys do it but you need to be aware of what needs to be done in service for that so this is where i think your log book how well you maintain your log book is as important as anything else. and if you have a driver then the driver doesn't know how to fill in the log book it's a double edged sword then got it got it interesting point okay okay here you here you on this one adil in your language let's shift geared go oh, brilliant shift gears. okay mm. uh what car to buy kind of a thing okay there's uh i'm i'm sure you'll have some pretty strong opinions on this one okay. yes but uh, here's a question that's uh come in um uh you know uh, from someone who's looking to offer some advice to his uh niece who is lives in bangalore uh, on her own and uh, she's toying with what kind of car to buy Mm-hmm. and apparently she seems conflicted because investing in a compact seems sensible and practical because it's easy to park uh but uh, given that largely work will be it's going to be work from home the question on her mind is whether she should keep aside uh, you know uh you know money and uh, you know keep it on you know uh, should she go for a compact or should she uh you know going for a slightly larger uh, sedan you know so uh, something if larger has, if she has conflicts in her mind about investing for a compact compared to a sedan i think her money will be better parked in the bank she can take a small bit of it buy a pair of nike or adidas shoes and go by uber or ola <laughs> that is the best advice i can give her because no, why do you say that <laughs> because the fact of the matter is whether you buy a compact or a saloon and the pandemic is still going to go on both of them are going to be lying idle for a long time any which way it doesn't change from a compact to a sedan that it will be going on so you need okay. so you need to look at it in that manner of course and in fact an added third benefit would be Well, at least she'll be what you call uh, inspired enough to take a stroll with her uh, Reeboks or Nikes that way. <laughs> It does well for her own constitution and well-being. <laughs> so there are many benefits <laughs> about how you want to stretch this line of thought. Uh, Adil, I never thought I would ever live to hear you offer this advice because I thought that you uh, you come from the school of thought that. uh actually believes that given the times we live in uh we should own a car and not rely on uh you know that everyone should have an automobile at their disposal yeah, and not uh, rare thought process which is now proliferating immensely in many minds and the thing is that if i were in a position i'd buy a motorcycle i'd really buy a motorcycle to go anywhere properly kitted up of course for safety and what not but yes people have to understand one thing that it's not about just buying a car but in why i said all what i said about this lady in bangalore is bangalore has got one of the worst road scenarios going in the country horrible traffic every driver or rider thinks he has just got freedom from the british so they can do anything what they want they give their care 
two hoots about who else populates the road on the left, right, front, back, or even on top. So, and parking in Bangalore is horrendous. So, in that sort of sense, uh, I would not like to first and foremost operate in a city like Bangalore. But that's different because I, I have chosen something not to do what others have to, what you call purpose do. But yes, uh, whether she buys a small compact hatchback or a large sedan, first and foremost, she should be comfortable behind the wheel of the car. So, and she you, you use the term parking, compact. So she needs to have her skill sets for a larger sedan and parking even much more optimized than she would do need to do it with a compact. So driving skills, parking skills, and you said it's a lady driver. So I don't want to get on that line. Of Please, come on. That's, that's very hard. I don't want to get there because I know some of the best drivers in the world are women. And some of the worst drivers in the world are men. So, in that sort of sense, I don't want to go there, but that dispelling that popular notion, she'll be better off with a compact, buy a good top-end compact than to buy a medium-sized uh, sedan. A good top-end compact will all any way give you everything which is there, excepting a boot maybe. That's about it. Okay. 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 So, uh, so the Uber uh, Ola advice goes out of the window then. No, the, in an emergency, in an emergency, you can tap into that resource because when I went to Europe once, a uh, Uber guy came to pick me up in a Jaguar. So I was pretty through life. So it's great. And once he came to pick me up in a Maserati in Italy. So you have got Ubers at different. So the Maserati guy must have run out of gas. So he needed money for gas. So he suddenly became an Uber guy. So you never know. The world is going to change. And all change is not what you thought it to be. You should be prepared to be surprised. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I can't wait to be picked up in a... But don't expect a Maserati as a Uber tomorrow for you, huh? because that's what we discussed right now over here. Back <laughs> okay. will come, Linea might come. You know, you'll be damn thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> rubbing it in. You're, you're really rubbing it in. <laughs> you haven't forgiven me, right? You haven't forgiven oh, oh, me. <laughs> that's the only one lever I have on you in my life. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so Adil, uh, another question, okay, from, uh, uh, so, so here's one, uh, which is, um, uh, I have a friend uh, who is married and has his mother living with him as well, and post the pandemic, uh, they feel the need to trade in their 10-year-old Honda City for a more feature-rich, uh, bigger sedan or an SUV. Uh, because they think maintenance costs for the uh, city are climbing. Uh, but he's uh, reluctant to put down a large amount of uh, money up front for a new car and with the employment situation being quite volatile at this point. You know, sure. I don't have to articulate sure. all of that. Right? Now, so a used car, a better point at this uh, stage. Uh, and uh, which is one part of the question. But then on the other hand, uh, we are also witnessing a point. We, 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 we are also witnesses to used car prices going through the roof. Uh, so, uh, so, please, so, should he postpone his decision to replace his old car for the time being? Is being frugal the most sensible option at this point in time, or should he downgrade and buy a good quality hatchback? Yeah. Charles, this is a thing where there is not one single antidote to any of the issues which many people face, like the one you outlined right now. So, key thing is that what would I do in a situation? So, let's hypothetically think like that. If I were in that situation, uh, yes, one thing is for sure, I would not like to go and buy a second-hand car. 
I have never bought a second-hand car in my life. So maybe I'm uh, wired that way into thinking like that. So, no. But having said that, if you look at so many car players, like Maruti has got true value, Toyota has got its thing, Honda has got, Tata Motors has got, so many of these guys have got. They've got a good, and even these, uh, what do you call, car deco or whatever those things are there right now, where they have these, so they have got a good set of cars certified, made proper and whatnot. Okay, the caveat here is I have not experienced any of that. So I'm not qualified to say with conviction about that. My thing would be, I would try to look at my balance sheet, my accounts, etc. plan it with the wife and say, okay, let's make a investment in a good car. See, he's already used this car for 10 years means he is a keeper that way. Ten years, he's kept this car and it's a good car. He made a good decision to buy the Honda City. He needs to revisit that same decision and think across buying maybe a newer car. Sadly for him, there are no more sedans which are there in this space up to 12, 15 lakhs of rupees. Everything is populated with SUVs or SUV-styled cars. This SUV in uh, Monica is an absolute abuse because they're all front wheel drive hatchbacks uh, style to look like SUVs. So, but yes, so he needs to get into an SUV sort of a car where his wife as well as mother in law can get in and out of the car easily. Most SUV style cars have a raised height to get into, so it becomes a little difficult. So, he has got to go and get that checked. But I think today's uh, generation of these cars, like say the Hyundai Creta or the Tata Harrier or the Kia, uh, look at all these cars. They are fairly decent, just like sedans. It's just that they're styled like SUVs. So he will, whether he likes it or not, he will need to invest in a car like that. And they will last him, give him the same thing about seven, eight, ten years of good service across over there. Unless the government decides to say, off with your heads of all petrol and diesel cars and on to electrics and give a shock, then I can, you know, I'm not responsible for what I'm saying right now. But he <laughs> needs to invest in a car like that. The thing is that the brand new car comes without any baggage. It's ill-treated in its early life or whatever. All those things are taken. He can buy a car like that in with a lot of peace of mind. So my thing would be always to look, tell him to do his sums properly, see that he cuts down on going out to eat twice a month so he keeps his money apart from his EMIs or whatever. He'll get some money for his 10-year-old car which he, which he can trade in or whatever and get that thing. Going. But I think a brand new car always makes sense. Always makes sense. Brand new car always makes sense. Why not that? You just... Very briefly, very briefly, you, you, what's the probability of the government saying off with your heads and, you know, electric cars come in? What's the probability of that? My problem is that it's not consistent. They say off with your heads and then they give us the shiva. Even before they whack the thing, you have died of a heart attack. Because they say, oh, well, not now, not now, we'll, two years later we'll do it. So the anxieties which they create are as, what do you call, dangerous as what they propose to do, you know. <laughs> that, is, that is where I am. <laughs> and to be honest with you, I can rest yeah. easy because till today, we don't have 24-hour sustained uniform voltage, uniform wattage, uniform amperage, electricity coming for domestic use till today anywhere in the country how are we going okay. and where are we, where are we going to get the electric juice to run <laughs> mobility I have, a serious, I have a really serious question whenever i ask this question to niti ayog or whatever it is first and foremost i'm dismissed out of turn because i'm a bawaji first Oh, then they, you're a mad baba at that one. Let's go. <laughs> because who asked the right questions? So they get scared. And then they say, no, no, we, 
we have got these projections and what not yaar india has been living on projections and divine intervention for 15 16000 years and we are going to live on that like <laughs> ability <laughs> here <laughs> so that's why you should buy a brand new car petrol or diesel okay no okay. problem okay. see that okay makes his own budgetary allocations that way properly and does it but he will be better off that way okay Okay. Here you are. This one. Now, uh, here's a here's a here's an interesting question. Um, mm. I have a relative who's uh, exploring buying a new car, but mm. is confused whether he should look at prioritizing build over a car that promotes that. Uh, 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 but is confused whether he should uh, look at prioritizing build quality mm. over a car that promises. technology and its feature rich hmm. what makes yeah. sense in these times given that usage may actually come down and oh. are there sensible ways to manage the trade off between reliability and technology uh, in these times i i think this is one of the best questions i've heard in the course of our discussion today for the simple reason and it cuts across not just with pandemics and what not today a car which is built by any manufacturer is not a bad car given the way you used to see cars 20 years ago no one makes a bad car these days everyone makes very good cars except Up. except my car right that's what oh, you they stop they stop making bad cars see it out we had <laughs> really like, they saw the writing on the wall they understood everything <laughs> so, so they let you unfortunately but <laughs> I'm sorry, I interrupted you. I'm sorry, I interrupted you, but but you have to wrap it in for me. Yeah, thanks. Go yeah, on, no, go on, go on. They, so they don't. No one makes a bad car. Unfortunately, it's the great cars which sell. So among the good, you need to see how great a car is is there in the market for you. What is important is today, given legislation on safety, emissions, uh, crashworthiness, everything. technology is already there at a very high level number 1 and it is very user friendly technology for the most part of it structural uh, rigidity the structural safety what we spoke about is now inbuilt there that's why I, earlier i used the term that don't look at the thinness of the sheet metal it is by design that it is Use thin so that the crumple zones and whatnot are uh, designed to save the occupants in a crash. So the crash forces get dissipated because of the crumple zone engineering which has been done. So that's the there's everything is there done by design, not to yeah. Sometimes manufacturers do save cut costs, cut corners here and there, but by and large now they have no place to run and hide. they may try to run but they cannot be made to run also they be they'll be caught and hiding is out of the question now so what this gentleman or woman who is written to you right now is a great question he or she should not have any issue about he should he or she should go and find a car which best suits her needs her uh, likes and dislikes what she wants out of a car how she wants to use it look at that buy any car which catches Feel, she feels good about all those you know, questions which she asked are already inbuilt into the thought process behind each and every new car which is there on the market today. Okay, okay, <clears throat> great. Thanks, thanks so much for that, Adil. Adil, uh, there's uh, uh, one question that is playing on the back of uh, people's mind and mm. uh, who want to buy a car, uh, mm. and this is something that we are picking up quite uh, a bit. is uh, in terms of wait times for delivery uh is that going to be a given or uh, are we going to will there be longer wait times and yes. apparently uh, uh discounts also seem to be at least on the face of it it there seem to be fewer discounts than usual on offer uh, is that 
uh, what is the trend? What what as consumers, what is it that we should uh, look right now, for? What is it that we should anticipate? Today, what has happened is because of this pandemic and because of the chips going to be there in so many aspects of a car's makeup, be it the engine management systems, but more often than not, in the infotainment systems, 90% of all these things come from China. And there's a big pushback against China globally on this front. So I'll just narrate one or two examples. Uh, Mercedes-Benz and BMW in Germany have an issue of cars not coming through because of a shortage of chips. In India, the Mahindra Thar has a big, big issue because very few chips are coming in. So they are trying to give cars without infotainment systems to those who are desperate for that car. And the tragedy for Mahindra is that the th you know, it's a double edged not a tragedy per se, but a good problem to have. The Thar has never not, they have got a waiting list of close to 14 months. And the bookings are still piling in on that, irrespective of the wow. fact that. They, wow. yeah. so okay. What I'm saying is, these uh, uh, shortage of these chips across the globe is a very, very big issue. And car makers, what happened to us? No one thought that the recovery for the automotive sector would be so quick. So a lot of the chip manufacturing got diverted to cell phones, computers, laptops, iPads, etc., that sort of thing. So the uh, production for uh, allo production allocation for these took priority of the automotive sector. So we got caught in a cleft across over there, not of our own making, but because of situational stuff. So, yes, you can uh, definitely think across longer waiting times for the car of your choice. It's a fact of life. Let's also understand one thing that you know, you're not going to get any discount because they're not making enough cars any which way. So, this sort of an uneasy situation will persist for some time or even more after normalcy. Uh, can be attained and whatnot. So as I see it across, it would be fanciful and pitiful, actually speaking, for a would-be buyer to even consider going and thinking of uh, getting a discount or whatever it is. One very important and significant thing which has happened in the last two, three days, I don't know if you are aware of it, and this is a trend which has already begun in Europe. Volkswagen, and Mercedes-Benz have decided to take charge of their own sales destiny. They are revamping their thought process on dealerships outside showrooms and look at delivering and selling cars on their own. So dealerships, as we know it, in India, they have just announced that there will be no cars kept at dealerships. They will be delivered through dealerships, but Everything point of sale or even thing be no inventories with dealers. Everything will be directly done with a company through the dealer. Pool. So you will not see cars in the dealerships. You will go and on a uh, computer screen, look at your uh, things which you want on a car, spec your spec out your car, etc. And then so there's a big revolution happening. It's early days, but it's happening there in the sales. Uh, process of various manufacturers. It's very, it's just three, four days old here right now in India. But it's a scary thought. It will change. So the pandemic has hastened these things much quicker than what we envisaged. We never even thought of how many people have thought about that. I don't know. But already last about a year back, Volkswagen and Mercedes Benz had become, become, uh, begun toying with just such an idea in Europe, and they've already uh, incorporated that in very many areas in Germany. So this line of, and I think they have uh, achieved a fair degree of success as well. So if they think that they can get it done there, I'm sure at a very early stage, they would like to what you call put 
those building blocks in place here as well with the car so it's a scary thing i don't know how why do you how, say scary there uh, for a certain reason i'd like to go and buy my car in a showroom go touch see discuss etc everything at least there are other cars which are there like i want this feature that feature at least i see it physically across over there not uh, digitally or anything now it will be something and sometimes it comes across what you thought you are getting and what you are getting because you didn't know out of ignorance or sheer not grasping technology or whatever it is it's a different thing so i think yes plus also let's talk about how many people will be unemployed because of this or whatever i have not even gone there as yet it's just 3 4 days old since mercedes benz in, informed about this but again this is a new reality we have woken up to no oh, fascinating so if i hear you right what you're saying is that it we are we are possibly looking at a future where car dealerships may it is it, entirely possible that car dealerships may just be a thing of the past and uh, as consumers you and i we may be just picking out our cars or yeah. motorbikes as the case may be from manufacturers directly and getting delivery i i, I, I think yeah. yes the worst case scenario is that exactly what you are saying and outlining i think the worst case scenario uh, i only dread to think that we don't lose the character of a, why we buy a car you buy a car because you need something intrinsic which really uh, touches you here and not just here alone so if this sort of a thing happens i think it's all going to be here the here and, is the head is what you mean yeah the head is what you mean and even then it will what you call make your head spin round and round oh well actually other just I'm, i'm when i think about it i mean personally i mean uh, you know if i if, to me the dealer is you know one of those uh, you know very evil vicious kind of a character you know you should know you should know <laughs> oh there i should have expected you to drop it again in for me those are not evil but some guys really take i think they have been descended from the devil so <laughs> maybe they'll shame the devil also in many cases <laughs> it happened like that. okay okay so so if i hear you right so if we were to do, so so if i hear you right just going back to where you started out from it is also possible that you know the that that uh, manufacturers are also overwhelmed their order books are flowing so it is so we can expect uh, delays in uh, launches and uh, even after return to quote and quote uh, uh, there's different launches are happening uh, digitally any which way they say okay. today we have uh, hyundai announcing the hyundai alcazar today just about a few hours ago in the afternoon uh yesterday mercedes launched its mercedes maybach gls suv again digitally so what is hap- that's happening now the alcazar and the gls cater to a very higher end uh, section of car buyers so they can get away with that sort of a thing but when you have to do a car why is there not been a single maruti announced in these uh, last Eight ten months. So the simple reason Maruti is a masses car, and the masses have got to look, touch, feel, see it across over there. Uh, it's simple as that. The, the government asked everyone to go and get registered on the Coven site to get your shot. How many people are computer savvy to go out on that thing? It's a different thing. The Coven bloody uh, website used to collapse every second minute. so you have to be careful to get that one minute it was operating so how many guys are savvy enough so so this you still have a fairly large populace who needs to see the cars touch them feel them talk to people that thing cannot be replaced in a jiffy you know? okay okay so if 
a regular guy like me who cannot afford four five cars and you know i'm going to and i'm going to and i am and i i'm going to take your advice this time adil i'm going to take your advice and i'm just going to you know go buy a new car what would you tell me should i should i hang on or should i postpone my decision you, to you should, have, new car? you should have hung yourself long time ago <laughs> <laughs> dying with a thousand cuts in the <laughs> you should have done this long time ago i told you that long time ago but you are such a glutton for punishment it <laughs> is death by seduction you know <laughs> so so what should i do so tell me what should i do is that, so should i postpone the purchase of a new car now, now, now you have to oh. give me to someone to take your car away forget about postpone your You have I'm to be serious. Be serious about this. I yeah. I need to buy a new car. So what would you advise? Buy a new car now. Just buy a new car now. Period. Buy a new car now. Buy a new car now. Period. But but there are launches. Uh, but 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 uh, but I'll have to wait it out, right? That's what. Oh, so, you you have a friend known as Adil Daru Kanawala. You can always tell him so he can what you call hasten your <laughs> delivery. uh only if you are good to me ha huh? and don't ask me any <laughs> but but adil but adil that 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 that, that you being very kind to me but on a, on a more serious note i mean for people who uh, who who don't have access to uh, adil daru khana wala uh you know what would what advice would you have for them my advice is that book as early as possible okay don't, don't procrastinate on that you need to make your decision across over their feet and it, i think today all uh, companies when they you book a car there is a clause across over there which if you want to cancel you get your money back as well so i don't think that you should be you are in a bad situation there you know so if even if the wait is 6 months and in the 6 months then you change your decision because something else catches your uh, i or something over there you find a new model come you can do that thing across over there okay yes you have it will be a tedious process uh, more paperwork etc but you have to go through that so no pain no gain but i think a new car you will have to what you call invest in with the booking amount at an early uh, date itself you know you have to do that that is what my sincere advice always is As always, Adil, my old friend. It is a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for taking I time out. Take, and cannot take all that pleasure. I am even the pleasure for me is manifold. What it is for you? It's <laughs> inverse. <laughs> I get ten times the delight you get when you speak to me, but I get ten times more. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Now, Adil. Thanks a lot.